Hi, my name is Brian, and today I'm going to shoot a video about doing cove corners on sheetrock. So cove corners are sometimes called bull nose. Um, some people just call them rounded corners. Um, and, um, you know, I was a little intimidated by them, and I've done quite a bit of sheetrock. Um, so I wanted to uh, shoot a video to uh, give back a little bit and show other people just exactly how cove corners are done. Now, I am doing cove corners on the um, opening around my 350 gallon saltwater aquarium. You know, I have a bunch of you guys who really enjoy my videos about aquariums. I am so sorry that it is taking two thirds of forever to get this aquarium up and running. Um, you know, I had a little confession to make. Uh, my last house, uh, I, I had my aquarium between the um, master bedroom and the master bathroom, and it was it was fantastic. I just didn't spend any time in there, and uh, so I realized that I could um, basically replace the house so I could get the aquarium in a more central spot because that house wasn't compatible with having an aquarium in the middle of it. So I bought this house and I'm rebuilding it, and. Um, you know, there will be some cabinetry panels that go here. I'll make some videos on uh, how I make cabinet panels at some point. But uh, I'm going to treat this like a window. Um, so it'll be visible on three sides. And uh, my best friend from high school, John, asked um, for me to shoot a video on how to do cove corners. Um, and uh, so, John, this, this video is for you. And uh, it's for all the folks like you who um, just need a little inspiration uh, to see how this is done. So, um, you know, I found a lot of videos that talked about cove corners, but they didn't show from start to finish what to do. So here we go. So what I've got is I've got my drywall up and I've got it prepped for a regular 90 degree corner because that's how your that's the easiest way to get the drywall installed. You stick it up here, trim it flush. And when you go to do cove corners, there's really two ways to tackle this. So um, there are three different kinds of product out there. Um, there is a metal cove corner. You know, metal's nice. Well, I, no, it's not. It, it'll cut you. It's difficult to work with. It rusts. Um, and God forbid that you hit it because it'll dent. Um, metal sucks. There's a paper product. Um, it's expensive. I don't, I don't really know what else it's good for other than it's expensive. Um, you know, and, and I, I have to admit, there's two schools of thought on uh, sheetrock. Let me just get a little more comfortable here and do what you're not supposed to do on a ladder and just sit on it. So one school of thought says you use ready mix. Um, I think ready mix sucks. Um, so when I was younger, uh, I learned how to do sheetrock using setting compound. Most people think setting compound is the work of the devil. I think it's fantastic. Um, you know, you mix it up, you add water, depending on if it's 20, 45, or 90 minutes, you have that much time to work with it. And then it's hard as a rock. A couple hours later, you can go over it and put another coat on. So um, the last kind of corner is this vinyl PVC stuff. Um, big box stores like Home Depot sell it. That's where I bought this. It's $2 for a 10 foot stick. So it's cheap, cheap, cheap. Um, and that's one of the many reasons I like it, but it, it's also really easy to work with. It does not cut you. Do this with metal. I promise it will, it'll cut you open. Um, so a little bit about corner prep. So you can see here that I have clipped the corners. So this stuff cuts really, really easily with a uh, pair of scissors. I have a nice pair of heavy duty scissors and you just clip it on all four corners. And the reason you clip the corners is because when you screw them down, you don't want the corner sticking up at an angle and it's a real hard to hide it with the mud. So um, it's possible to go ahead and put it on like this. And in some situations, that's fine. You know what, this is not the right size. So um, I'll get to cut one of these over and you'll, you'll see how I cut them. Um, the problem with putting it on like this is it will make the molding very proud of the wall. So if you're up against a, a corner, it doesn't really matter. Just do it the easy way. Um, I'm gonna show you how to cut this stuff. Um, this is really easy. So first things first, um, it comes in 10 foot pieces. Just 
Yeah, you can measure it, but this is how I do it. It's quick and simple. And I just kind of eyeball it and get it in here. And that's good enough, at which point I will uh, clip the corners. And so I'll bring this down here so you guys can see what I'm doing. Cut them at a 45 degree angle. It prevents pop outs that are impossible to tape and float. So this saves time. So, and there you have it. This one's ready to go in. So next what I need to do is I need to prep the corner. So, you know, there's a couple people doing this with a knife and, you know, that all sucks. The easy way to do this is with a sawzall. So I've got a nice cordless sawzall, plenty of battery. I've, I've got a metal blade mounted. Um, you can do it with both, but the metal blade works just fine. And then you just hold it at a 45 degree angle. Mostly done. Okay, it creates a crap ton of dust. Don't worry about it. Now, if you're thinking that, what about the angle? Doesn't matter. Doesn't even matter the amount as much. I mean, the more even you can get it, the better. But uh, overall, you're just trying to knock that corner off, get it out of the way. Okay, so at this point, go ahead and test fit it. It's, oh, wrong one. Throw that one out of the way so I don't do that again. And um, now what I'll do is I'll just set this here where I can grab it. And I always uh, start in the middle and work my way out. I'll come back and do the face. So anywhere that I can see the material move is someplace that probably needs a screw. Now, you do not need a screw gun to do this. You can do this by hand with regular drywall screws. I just happen to be doing 6,500 square feet of sheetrock, so I have a screw gun that takes collated screws. Um, this makes it go faster, and that makes me happy. So now I will, oh, that's right size, so I will go ahead and clip this one and, and put it in. I'm just checking to make sure there's no bulges. The problem with the bulges is they uh, stick out in the mud. So you gotta make sure that everything is flat. And if that means more screws, then that means more screws. So, so one of the things that I did not mention, and this is actually a really important step before you do uh, taping and floating. Is you should run your hand along here and check for screws that are sticking out too far. And just gently run your hand along to look for the screws. There's one here in the corner that you can't see, but you will feel these before you will see them. Let's 
so that's good to go there. So at this point I need to mix up some mud and um, then I can, I'm actually going to mud this corner, I'm going to mud this side, and I'm going to mud this corner here and come down and over. And um, I'm using uh, fiberglass tape. I've got a little fracture in my wall here, so I've actually got some extra tape on the wall. That piece does not want to stay, so I'll cut a new piece. And um, the purpose of the tape is just to hold the mud together, and anywhere you have a significant imperfection, um, it's a good idea. And when I okay, so um, I'm really sorry the uh, microphone battery died when I was recording this. And so I'm going to voice over the audio so that you guys uh, don't lose half of the video. Okay, so I'm adjusting the camera here and uh, I'm working with hot mud and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the different tools that I'm using once I get the camera set up here. And again, I'm voicing over this after I've recorded it so the audio is not in sync and I apologize. Okay, so first things first, um, I've got a 10 inch knife and a 6 inch knife here. And the 10 inch is used primarily for the second coat and for certain special situations and then the 6 inch is used for the first coat. Now, I've also got a couple other special tools. I've got a small four inch knife, which is useful for getting into small areas. And um, I also have a corner tool, which is, uh, and um, I use the metal pans. Um, it's like all metal construction. It's real easy to clean up and it's very, very durable. They're about $13. Um, when I use the plastic ones, they just don't tend to last. And then last but not least, you really need a bucket scoop, and that's what that is. And that bucket scoop has a curved edge that fits nicely into a five gallon bucket and um, lets you get the mud out without scratching the devil out of the bucket or, or fighting with the mud trying to get it out. So I'm going to go ahead and load it, and you'll see it falls off the scoop, but it's, it's really sticky. It's kind of um, like a peanut butter consistency. And for a first coat, I like it a little bit thicker. So I'm going to go ahead and load my tray up. And you can see here I've got a eh, pretty, pretty full tray. And then I'm just going to start, you know, coating the, the um, spot between the pieces of trim. And, um, you know, if you were doing this with pre-mix, I think you'd have a really hard time because you're putting a lot of mud on here and it's going gonna, it's gonna to crack as it dries. Um, this is setting compound, and so it, it does not shrink and crack. And... Um, so what I'm doing is there is I'm just packing the top corner and then I just slide the the spatula down. I'm trying to clean this up. You know, the cleaner it goes on, the less there is to screw with later. And then I'll just kind of work my way down. And uh, it uses a lot of mud, but it goes quickly. And uh, one of the things you'll see me do constantly is to clean off the the uh, knife or spatula as I work. I apologize, I've gone out of camera view here. Um, so all of the audio from this point on is going to be voiced over um, and I would encourage you to um, speed up and jump through if you have areas that you're, you're curious about. Um, you know, mainly I just let the camera keep rolling to show um, how this, this works in case, you know, you wanted to see it. Um, sometimes when somebody describes something, it's very useful to, to be able to uh, see them doing it. So now I'm going to do the side that's behind the, the corner, and I'll actually move the camera here in a moment so that you can 
uh, see you know what's going on and you'll notice that I hold the the spatula sort of backwards um, this takes a little bit of practice to get it right um, you know one of the things I, I would always tell people is you know you're, you're gonna drop mud and you're gonna drop a lot of mud when you're first learning to to do this but pay attention to how I um, you know scrape the the spatula and how um, I, I do it actually almost every single time I go back in there I am clearing the spatula and then getting a fresh scoop so that I know where it's at so at this point I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera Alright, so I've gone ahead and moved the camera, and I actually have a seam here, right? so I'm using the wide knife, which I wouldn't normally use on a first coat, and, um, you know, it's no big deal, it's always just, you know, right tool for the right, for the task, and um, so I'm just, you know, one fell swoop, and, and this is a little bit tricky because I'm, I'm trying not to touch the aquarium, so I don't want to get any mud on it, and I also don't want to scratch it. It's very, very unpleasant to get scratches out of acrylic. So I just have to work carefully and, um, you know, I also want to get it as smooth as possible. And that's really all I needed that 10 inch uh, spatula for on this particular portion. So now I go back to the 6 inch and I'm going to try and pack this corner. Um, you know, I actually, this corner's not so bad. The other corner on the right um, is, I, I'm not able to get everything in there. And so uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll just start, you know, applying mud um, to the cove over top of the aquarium. And um, I, I'm trying to go about an inch and a half to two inches above it. Um, you know, I plan on making two passes here. And the first pass is just to sort of pack the plastic um, and get it, you know, cemented down with, with the mud. And um, you can see that, you know, I'm, I'm working kind of quick. Um, I am working with 45 minute mud in this case, which gives you a good solid working time of about half an hour. Um, sometimes you get it lucky and you can push it a little longer. Um, so I'll remember to adjust the camera here in just a second. I apologize that I forgot to adjust the camera. Good helps hard to get. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and clean it up. I only go a couple feet at a time. Um, if I go further, I wind up dropping mud all over the place. And um, you can see it's pretty pretty darn smooth. And it'll, it'll harden like this, and it doesn't crack. And um, then I'm going to do the uh, bottom and here I'm trying to go about halfway back because this is about three and a half inches deep and I'm basically finishing the sheetrock around the aquarium the same way I would as if this was a window um, and uh, so the bottom will have a piece of wood trim of some sort and um, and and then there'll be a ca some cabinet panels at the top that are removable but that most of the time are there and uh, um, the area above the aquarium is actually going to get finished in half inch hardy backer uh, and th that'll be coated with uh, epoxy so here i'm just you know leveling out the the material and there i finally remember to adjust the camera and, and again i'm sorry about that it, there we go i'll widen the lens up for you so you can see the whole thing And um, one thing that's important, you'll notice I'm almost completely emptying the tray before I reload it. And what that does two things. Um, one, it makes sure the mud doesn't kind of sit in the corner. Um, with 45 minute mud, sometimes it has a tendency to um, start to, to harden completely after it's been worked a little bit. And uh, so getting, making sure it gets up on the wall um, makes it easier. Um, And I'll normally reload the um, the the little hand uh, 
container there, a little tray, um, before I start an area so that I have all the mud I need for that area. That's just a personal work preference. And um, I believe at this point I have used up all the mud that's in the bucket or, in the, or I might maybe have one more time that I load the, 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 the tray. Now, one thing that happened is I spilled some mud on the floor, and so you see me scraping it on the end where I don't normally work. And the reason is I, I, I scraped the mud up off the floor and flipped it out of the way, but when I did that, I got dirt and trash in, in, on the spatula, and I do not want that in my work because it'll leave a whole bunch of little streaks. And so um, what I do is I got rid of as much as I could, but then I scraped the nastiness off. And um, if the trash got into the mud, I would actually scrape the mud out and throw it away. Um, the other thing you can't see is when I do the, the top corner, like right there, I'm actually putting a lot of mud on the spatula, and then I push and kind of shake it a little bit, which lets it um, uh, kind of squeeze out from under. And here I'm fixing a screw that I found. Um, I don't like to get um, mud on my my um, screw bits, but I, I, you know it's far better to do that than to have um, you know a screw sticking out. Um, I recommend keeping an old towel handy when you're doing this um, because otherwise you'll you'll wind up with mud on every single thing you own. And so as soon as, soon as it gets on your hands, just wipe it off and and um, you know it's also good to you know clean up the outside edge of your tray and make sure that. Um, you know, junk doesn't build up and get on your hands. Now, if the stuff that you're scraping is crunchy, um, do not put it back in the tray. You know, find somewhere else to get rid of it. Trash can, floor, outside, uh, one of the ends that you don't use, doesn't really matter. So I'm going a little bit wider on the mud here because I have a piece of tape that you can barely see in the video. Um, the, the board was miscut there and the road is it, you know, floated in a little too far. Um, and uh, so I have a little, an extra sliver of sheetrock right there that's about an inch and a half wide. So that cleans up real nice. And now I'm going to sit here and I've got kind of a gap there at that corner and I, I won't be able to fill it on one pass, so it'll actually take me two or three shots to, to get this, but I'm going to get the first uh, pass on here and um, let it harden, and then I'll, I'll pack it in there again tomorrow, probably. Now, if I was earlier in the day, I could come back and hit this a second time, but it's, it's kind of late in the day, so I actually stopped after this, because this was the, I think this was the fourth bucket of mud that I had made for the day. And again, I, I apologize, the audio is out of sync, the uh, microphone battery died, so I'll actually change both of those tomorrow. So I've got an area here where we damaged the sheetrock when we're putting the aquarium in, and um, what's interesting here is that I can actually just completely patch over that with uh, the, uh, some mesh tape, and then I'm just going to load it with, with mud. And um, I'll you know, I'll have to sand it and go over it one or two more times, but I'll basically rebuild the wall with this stuff. And you just can't do that with ready mix compound. And this is one of the things that I think is really neat about setting compound. So that's that's really rough, but it's it's very workable. So I'm going ahead and doing the screw holes, and what I do is I, I patch them and then I scrape them all in one fell swoop, and that, that gets them all done quickly. Now you can see a black line there in the video, and that's actually not a crack. Um, I had a little bit of malfunction with the spray foam equipment on the other side of the wall, and so I've got some resin there, and I'm actually covering it with the mud. Um, because I think the mud will stop it from bleeding through the paint. <laughs> and uh, I don't, 
I, I, I'm afraid it would actually bleed through if I uh, just painted over it. Now around my light switch, I, I it's cut just a little bit too wide, so I've actually got a couple pieces of mesh tape there, and I'm um, just kind of packing it, the mesh tape. I'll, I'll come back and actually do a little bit better job of finishing it on my next coat, but this just establishes a base. And, uh, So those are butt joints there, so I'm not trying to get them completely smooth, I'm just trying to knock off any ridges that are on there. And then, um, oh yeah, I've got this lower section here, and that, this is a little bit tricky here because I've got a corner that's actually kind of a big corner, and then I've got a, a piece of cove molding. So what I'm doing is just packing the material in there, and um, I'll actually... Um, make a pass with the blade and then I'll come back with a corner tool and, and surface it. And in the background you can see a corner that's finished and it's ready for texture. Um, what I'm trying to do is get a lot of the sheetrock ready to texture all at once. And then I'll texture it, prime it, and paint it um, in the next few days. So then I'm doing the, the other side of the corner. And again, I'm trying to use up as much of my mud at, at, at once as possible. Um, and this mud is, is just beginning to get a little bit stiff on me, but I've actually, um, you know, for first coat, it's just fine. So now that I've got the corner packed with uh, mud, what I'll do is just kind of trim it or skim it. And you can do that with your, your blade, but it's real hard to get a good corner that way, so there's a special tool for this. And I've got one spot there that, that had a dent in it. Now, I don't like to set stuff on the floor, so I'm always putting stuff on top of the ladders. Sometimes it bites me and falls off. So. Here's the uh, the corner tool, and you just put that in there and push it into the corner, and then just in one fell swoop, yeah, you do that, um, and it skims the extra off, and then you just clean it with your knife, and uh, boom, you're done. It looks fantastic, and um, your second coat is done with a 10-inch knife, and that's just kind of all there is to it. So I will put the last of the mud in, in here, and I only mixed up about a half a bag of mud. And um, then I will finish this corner uh, next to my front door. So that's the last of the mud. So I got about four pans of mud out of a half a bag. And the bag's about $8. Um, stuff's pretty cheap. So I'll do the screw holes quick and simple. Now I'm going to start packing this corner. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm starting to have a little bit of trouble with this. It's, uh, it's getting stiff on me and it makes it difficult to work. Um, if it was, uh, if I was doing a second coat, I would actually have to throw this mud away. But first coat, it doesn't really matter if it's a little bit rough. Um, you know, that's the second coat kind of evens that out. And then normally I just sand it and do touch up and um, then it's ready to put texture on. Yeah, this is real hard on my hands. I actually was diagnosed with carpal tunnel and um, this constant wrist action is, is actually really, it, it, it just is... The, it, it's uh, caused a lot of pain for me, um, but, uh, you know, I get through it. And I've actually had my right hand fixed, and my left hand has not been fixed. And what happens, actually, as I do this is my left hand tends to go numb sometimes. So it's, it's uh, 
a little bit irritating, but um, I want it done, um, and I want it done my way, and I've got lots of time, and this is not difficult work. Um, you can scrape the corner tool off with the with the pan, but it's a little difficult to do. Um, now I had a bump in the middle of this, and I don't know what the bump was from, so I actually went and and made an extra pass over this. Um, sometimes there'll be like a screw or something sticking out, and that's what I was actually looking for. I I couldn't I don't know what caused it, but. Um, so now I'll pull the ladder over here and uh, finish it up. Yeah, I, sh I should probably have cropped that out so you guys didn't have to watch me adjust the camera and stuff, but you know this is just what goes on and, and this is really uh, quick here so I'm gonna finish the ceiling and I'm gonna there's a butt joint there and um, again with a butt joint you're just trying to establish something over top of the mesh um, with these uh, ceiling corners you always want to pack both sides or all three sides and then you come in there and finish it with the corner tool as best you can knowing that you'll have to clean it up on the second coat um, when you do the second coat, you can only do um, one side of it at a time. Otherwise, you you will mess up mess up the corner, and uh, you just never seem to kind of win. Um, So now I'm going to go ahead and pack this, and I've actually got a 3 8 to a half an inch gap at the top, so you're seeing me put a lot of pressure and a lot of mud up there, and um, that's just to fill that gap up, and um, I'll smooth that out with the corner tool, and it'll, it'll actually look pretty darn fantastic. There we go, there's the last piece of mud. And that's always a happy thing when you put the last mud on uh, for the day or for a job. So now I'll just finish this off with the uh, corner tool. So I do one side and then I clean it and then I come back and I'll do the vertical because the, the left side's already done. I did that you know, probably last week. And then that's the, all there is to it. Now I did screw up and put my hand in, in on the left there. I grabbed the corner and forgot it was wet. And, so I'm actually touching that up, and um, that's all there is. Thanks for watching my video.